So we are solving systems of linear equations, but we're going to solve it by using the matrix method. In the last video, I did a comparison of how the matrix method is virtually the same thing as the elimination method, except for it looks like it's in different format. I discussed the three operations that we could do when we are working in matrix method. We can interchange any two rows. We can multiply a whole row by a number that's not zero. And we can add the multiple of one row to a different row. And we do each of these three things um, whenever we're trying to do something. So let's actually take these row operations and let's actually utilize them in an example. But before we start the full-fledged example, let's talk about what our really goal is at this step. So our goal at this time is what's called either Gaussian elimination or row echelon form. So we have an augmented matrix over here on the left. And ignore the variables A, B, and C. They're just kind of placeholders. So when we do things with Gaussian elimination or row echelon form, our goal is to get ones on this diagonal here from the top left to the bottom right and a zero in the bottom left corner. Now, we don't necessarily need anything up here. Whatever we have here is perfectly fine because we saw in the last example that once I get this answer here, that tells me what my y variable is. And if I know what my y variable is, then I can back substitute it in my first equation to tell me what my x variable is. Okay, so the variables then can be reinsorted into form equations in which we can complete the solution. So we do this, just like I said, taking the bottom equation of y equals whatever number and back substitute it into the top number. So in my example down here at the bottom with my augmented matrix, we can see that I have this system of equations here. Now this is in the format that we want it to be in. This over here on my left is what's called Gaussian elimination or again row echelon form. This is my prime format. Once I get it in this format, I can guarantee what my answers are. So if I put this back into system of equation format, my top equation would be a 1x plus a negative 5y is equal to 2. And my bottom of equation is 0x, so I'm going to leave that off, plus a 1y is equal to negative 3. And so that now is my system of equations. So I can take my y answer and I can substitute it into my first equation. I can back substitute it. So that gives me x minus 5 times my negative 3 is equal to 2. This gives me positive 15, so if I were to subtract 15 from both sides, that would give me the answer of x equals negative 13. And so we have the answer here. Okay, now the question is, is I know what to do once I get it in this format, but how do I actually get to this format where we have ones on the main diagonal, a zero down here and below, and then whatever we have left with up top? So that's the ultimate goal, is to get it in Gaussian elimination format or row echelon format. All right, so let's go ahead and do this example here. So we're going to solve this system of equations by using the matrix method, meaning we're going to use my three row operations, and we are going to hopefully end up with this format here. And once I get it in this format, I know what my answers are. Okay. So the first step is to go ahead and put it into an augmented matrix. So I have a 4, a 3, and then 11. 1, negative 3, negative 1. And we're going to put this into the matrix in an augmented matrix, which means my brackets on the outside and a line to separate where my equal signs are. Now, remember what our goal is. So our goal is to get a 1 on the top left on the bottom right a zero down here on the bottom left. It doesn't matter whatever we get here because we're going to use that for our back substitution. And then whatever answers we get here are going to be the x and the y answers. Okay, when I try and solve these, I usually do a certain format, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do it this way, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best way. It's just the way that I'm the most familiar with. So the very first thing that I like to do is I like to get my one in the top left, my zero below it, my one next to it, and then go from there. So that's the order that I'm gonna do here. 
So the very first thing that I do is I want to get a 1 where this 4 is. Now remember, I can only do really three things to get a 1 where this is. I can interchange any two rows. I can multiply a row by something that's not 0. And I can add a row or a multiple of a row to a different row. Well, let's go ahead and see what my easiest step is going to be. Okay, well, if I look below it, I see that I have a 1 below it. So the easiest way to get a 1 where that 4 is is just to interchange the two rows. So I'm going to write my steps over here to the right. So in case you have a question, hopefully you can interpret these steps to see exactly what I've done. I'm basically interchanging the two rows. So I'm going to take my row 1, and I'm going to interchange it with row 2. So I need to interchange my whole row all the way across, including even the numbers over here on my right-hand side. Then my bottom row becomes what my row 1 was. So I have interchanged my two rows. So that means I have satisfied my 1 up here on my top left. He's good to go. Okay, the next step that I usually do is I try and usually get this 4 into a 0. Whenever I'm trying to eliminate something, just like we did in the elimination method, the easiest way i found to do this is by using this method here. Add a multiple of one row to a different row. So let me talk about how we would actually do this in elimination method so you can see what we're doing here. So if this was a system of equations, I would have a 1x minus 3y is equal to negative 1, a 4x plus 3y is equal to 11. Well, to eliminate my x values, I would multiply my row 1 by negative 4. So that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take my row 1, and I'm going to multiply it by negative 4. So when I do that, that gives me a negative 4x plus 12y is equal to positive 4. And then I add these two rows. So I add my row 2. And when I do this, this becomes my new row 2. Okay, so my row 1 stays the same, my 1, negative 3, negative 1. And my new row 2 becomes from when I add these two together, and I should be eliminating a variable. Negative 4x plus 4x does give me a 0x. 12y plus 3y gives me a 15y. And 4 plus 11 gives me 15. So I'm doing the exact same thing that I would be doing in my elimination method, except for I'm not using the x's and the y's and the equal sign. I'm just using the numbers that I see out here in front. Okay. So again, this is what we're trying to get away from. And just going from the numbers in front. So I took my original row 1 and I multiplied it by negative 4. And a lot of times I do the scratch work above it so I can see. 1 times negative 4 gives me negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 4 gives me 12. Negative 1 times negative 4 gives me 4. So that's what I did there. I add it to row 2, and that becomes my new row 2. So I have got a 0 right where I want it. Okay, now my next step is to figure out how to make this 15 into a 1. Now, typically, not always, but typically, whenever I want to get a 1, that's when I use option number 2. So this is kind of the method that I use. Whenever I want to get a 0, I use step number 3. And whenever I want to get a 1, I use step number 2. And whenever it's convenient, that's when I use step number 1. So these are kind of the steps that I use. Now, these aren't the only ways that these steps can be utilized. That's just the way that I use them primarily. Okay, so going back to my example here, to get rid of this 15, basically all I need to do is I need to multiply or divide that row by something. So again, if you think about this in equation format, if I have a 0x plus a 15y is equal to 15, I would just divide everything by 15. So that's what I'm going to do in this matrix format, is I'm going to take my row 2, 
and I'm going to divide it by 15, and that's going to be my new row 2. And so that puts me over here with my row 1 exactly the same, and my row 2 is 0, 1, 1. And now I have it right where I want it, where I have 1s in my diagonal, and I have a 0 below it. So this tells me what my answer for my y value is. This tells me that my y is equal to 1, if I would put this back into equation format. And then I substitute it into my first equation. That gives me my x variable. So I have a 1x minus 3y is equal to negative 1. Or x minus 3 times my y value, because that's what I found here, equals negative 1. This is negative 3. So if I add 3 to both sides, this gives me x is equal to 2. So I have my x answer, I have my y answer, and so therefore I have my overall answer using my matrix method. The point of intersection is 2, 1. And you can check these by graphing it the exact same way that we did it with systems of linear equations. We solve for y, we graph both of them, and we confirm that they intersect into 2, 1. So this is an example of using what we call either Gaussian elimination or row echelon form. In the next video, I'm going to basically be doing the same thing, but I'm going to take it one more step. And of course, we're going to be working through more examples.